Hey there, this is Chris Cole, Penwoods Equine Products, and this is my weekly log number seven. Uh, today we're going to talk about uh, the basics of breeding or getting your mare in foal. I'm not going to be doing the talking today. I'll ask a few questions. The person who will be doing most of the talking and explaining will be my sister-in-law, Rhonda, who is uh, involved with Penwoods Pertrons. She's the main breeder right there. They breed probably 275 to 325 mares per year, so she's a lot smarter than I am. I'm basically going to play the guy asking the questions. So that being said, here's my first question. Uh, hey, Rhonda, I am, uh, I'm, I'm going to play the guy that, that, that got two mares this year, bought them this summer. I'd like to breed them next spring. Uh, I need to know some of the basics. I'm a, I'm a new guy at it. Or at least that's what that that's what I think. So uh, I've heard some things about you know manipulating cycles, uh, uh, watching their heat cycles. Tell me some things I should be doing right now in December to get ready to breed this spring. Uh, okay, well it really depends on when you want to have that foal born. Uh, we have people at every end of the the. The spectrum. Some people want their foals born on green grass so they can just be turned out with their mothers right away. Uh, you know, they don't want to have them born in January when there's ice and snow and cold and you can't get them outside. Some, it's important to them to have them born early. Uh, so you know, what, they, what do you think I should do if I was one of those early guys? You want to, okay, so manipulating them with lights, um, you would need to start that light therapy six to eight weeks before you plan on that mare coming into a normal breedable heat. So if I, if I put in maybe a timer on my lights, how much per day? We, our timers are set there on 16 hours a day. Okay, 16 hours a day. Yes. Okay, so say, say I'm not one of those guys that wants to have an early foal. Say I'm one of those guys that wants to breed... April, May. Do I need lights? Uh, it still is a good idea if you have the availability. Okay. Because Mother Nature, if she had her way, our mares would be cycling in May and June. Oh, okay. okay. So uh, what about, uh, what about, do I need to call my vet? Okay. I don't know. I just bought these horses this, this summer. I don't know anything about them. What, what, what can the vet do for me now? Well, you really need to research the mares that you've got. Are they maiden mares? Never been bred? They before. are maiden mares. Okay, so it, it's not a bad idea if you have uh, a vet that's knowledgeable in breeding to come and just do an exam, make sure there's no, uh, you know, problems with their uh, physiological makeup, you know, in, in the vulva or that they don't, you know, don't have an inset Okay. Anus, you know, where the manure runs out. There's a lot of problems that can be involved with even maiden mares. Should I worry about any kind of infection? Is that something I should have tested or something I should automatically treat? If they have never been covered by a stallion and nobody has been inside them trying to breed them or, you know, you're worried about any kind of bacteria that has been introduced to them, I don't think it's necessary unless you went through one or two breeding cycles and everything was perfect and this mare is not pregnant, then I think, you know, you would need to do a culture, do some some background, uh, you know, checking to see if the mare has a problem. Okay. So uh, what kind of, uh, I, I know that I have a, a, a breeding fee to, to, to uh, that I, that I pay. What kind of veterinary cost do you think, or veterinary uh, appointments maybe, or those types of things that I'll have when I get into actually that breeding period of time? Um, again, it's going to depend on the area of the country that you're in. There's some areas where vets charge a lot more than right. others. Uh, but you know, you're, you're going to be looking at a, f a farm call, which when I talk to my customers, it can be anywhere from 50 to $150. Uh, 
if you can't inseminate the mare yourself, I and, cannot. And then the, the vet has to come back and okay. inseminate. Then you're looking at another farm call, what they might charge for that. So uh, what do you think? I don't have a way to be able to tell when they're cycling either. I just have those two mares. Right. So does my vet come and tell me when to order semen, when they're in heat? What, what do you think? Yeah, if you have no stallion available to teach and I don't. those mares with and you're, you're going into it blindly, uh, the best thing that you can do is have a vet come out with an ultrasound, see where they're at in their cycle. You could be lucky enough to catch them in heat. Right. Uh, or your vet's going to be able to say, hey, they're mid-cycle. If, if you want, we could bring the mare into heat by giving a shot right. of... And, and if I don't want to do that, he'll tell me I need to come back in a week or two and... Exactly. Okay. So, uh, so I got my vet fees, I got my breeding fee, and then say, say I'm breeding to your stallions. You guys will ship to me any, anywhere in the country, and I'm going to get overnight shipping, right? Yes. Okay. And I'm going to pay... Um. That ranges from could be forty five to a hundred and forty five okay. dollars. So on your location. and you and you guys collect on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Which means I breed on. Uh, you would breed on the next day. Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. We generally ship two doses unless we're really short of semen. So you would have two days to breed. Uh, some vets have the it's better in the mare. Than in the container, right. you know. Mentality. So would the would the second dose of semen be as potent as the first dose? Uh, if if it's a good strong horse, it should not be a whole lot different. Twenty four hours okay. after the second dose, and I would rather have it stay in the box, right? Um, and breed two separate days right. rather than putting okay. it all in. Okay. Now, finally, uh, we've been talking about breeding. And these are things, I'm guessing, are real general, right? It doesn't matter whether you, Penwood's Pertrons would be Pertrons, which would, which would be a draft horse. I have saddle horses. But it would all these things would apply to even miniature horses, right? right exactly. Yeah, anything from a 250-pound horse on to a 2,000-pound horse. Yes. You know, these are all basic kind of things that you're telling me. Right. Okay. Well, thank you very much. We're going to try to do this again maybe in a week or two. And we're going to try to talk about the nutrition portion that that mare should get to help her be more fertile and make things go a little bit easier. Thanks, Ron. Appreciate that.